I've been asked to talk about the not not only the diagnosis because there was uh, I think the the talk uh, um, before uh, me, but uh, uh, I started my talk uh, giving uh, two um, examples. One was uh, really straightforward to to the to the diagnosis of PNES, uh really very easily. The other one was the tough one, because uh, as a clinician, when you see someone uh, that sudden falls, it's really easy to make a diagnosis of uh, uh, an epileptic seizure. Why in the example that I showed during the, the, the talk, uh, was uh, not a clear cut diagnosis for, for epilepsy. Um, conversely, it was uh, a psychogenic non-epileptic seizure. So uh, from the clinical point of view, it's not always so easy to make the diagnosis. So neurophysiology can, can help a lot clinician mainly with the video EG, because if you are lucky and you are recording the video EG um, while the patient uh, is having a, a, a typical fit, uh, you are lucky because you see the, the normal EG during that ictal event. But if you are not recording an ictal video EG, uh, the diagnosis uh, remains still very difficult. and. Uh, from the neurophysiology point of view, you can try to use uh, other tests, uh, such as the heart rate variability, uh, the cardiac vagal index, the cardiac sympathetic index, or to look at the silent period um, on uh, electromyography. But they are not so specific uh, to make diagnosis. They are highly sensitive but low, with a low specificity. To the other hand, um, as I told you before, from the neuroimaging point of view, traditional imaging, the normal MRI, is uh, normal for, uh, for patient with NES. So you, you don't have uh, the, the chance to get uh, a biological marker for uh, epilepsy, such as hippocampal sclerosis, for patients with a temporal lobe epilepsy, uh, because for uh, people with psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, MRI is completely normal. So from this point of view, um, imaging is not helpful.